In this topic, we're going to discuss the heartbeat. So by the end of this topic, you should be able to answer the questions, what are the three stages in the heartbeat? So we can look at diastole, atrial systole, and ventricular systole. Then something that regulates the heart rate, which we call the pacemaker. How to find a pulse. And why does the heart rate increase during exercise? Now, if you cut the heart open, you'll notice four chambers and different valves and blood vessels. We went into detail how to label the heart in the last topic. So just to recap, let's quickly run through the different parts of the heart. Remember to identify the left from the right. So look for the side that has got the thicker ventricular wall. This is your left side since it has to pump blood all the way around the body. So you've got the left and the right. Let's label the different parts now, starting with the vessels that bring blood back to the heart. On the left, you've got the pulmonary vein. This returns oxygenated blood from the lungs. On the right, you've got the vena cava. This is the main vein in the body. This returns deoxygenated blood from the head and lower body to the right atrium. You've got the left atrium. This receives oxygenated blood returning from the lungs. So the atria have got thin walls since they need only to pump blood to the ventricles. And the right atrium receives deoxygenated blood returning from the vena cava. The pacemaker, which we'll discuss in a moment, is found in the wall of the right atrium. The left ventricle forces blood to the tissues all over the body. And the right ventricle pumps blood to the lungs. The two arteries at the top there, you've got the aorta. This is the main artery of the body. This carries oxygenated blood to the body tissues. So blood pressure is the highest here. And then you've got the pulmonary artery, which carries deoxygenated blood to the lungs. Can you remember the names of the different valves? So on the right, you've got the tricuspid valve. This prevents blood flowing back from the ventricle into the atrium. And then on the left, you've got the bicuspid valve. This also prevents blood flowing back from the ventricle into the atrium. And the last valves are your semilunar valves, which are found on the arteries. These prevent blood running back into the ventricles when pressure falls during relaxation. And the septum, which separates the two sides of the heart. So take a moment to look over the different parts of the heart and the details, and then we'll discuss the heartbeat. Now I'm sure you've heard the distinct lub-dub that the heart um, makes. Have you ever wondered what it is? Well, it's actually the different valves closing. The first sound is the bicuspid and tricuspid valves closing. So notice here how the tendons, when the valves close, are tight and the semilunar valves are open. Then the bicuspid and tricuspid valves open and the second sound you hear is the semilunar valves closing. So let's have a look at the different stages in the heartbeat. The heart beats as the cardiac muscles in the, its walls contract and relax. Now when they contract, the heart becomes smaller, squeezing blood out. This is called systole. When they relax, the heart becomes larger, allowing blood to flow into the atria and ventricles. And this is called diastole. So an easy way to remember what is happening in each stage is to put your hands together like I've done in this picture here. 
This is when the muscles in the heart are relaxed. So we call this diastole. The next step is atrial systole, where the muscles in the atria contract, forcing blood into the ventricles. And then the last step is ventricular systole, where the muscles in the ventricles contract, so the blood is pushed out of the heart. Okay, let's run through it again. You've got diastole, atrial systole, ventricular systole. So use your hands to remember the different stages. Looking at what actually happens, the first stage is diastole. So put your hands together in the state of diastole. Here the muscles of the heart are relaxed and blood flows into the heart. So notice how the atrioventricular valves, which we also call the bicuspid and tricuspid valves, are open. The semilunar valves up there in the arteries are closed, preventing blood from flowing back into the ventricles. So the heart is relaxed. Or the, sorry, the muscles in the heart are relaxed. Then you have atrial systole. This is when the muscles of the atria contract and the muscles of the ventricles are relaxed. So the atrioventricular valves are open. This is due to the pressure difference from the atria. There's a higher pressure, so it's forcing the blood through those atrioventricular valves into the ventricles. The semilunar valves remain shut. Then you've got ventricular systole. This is the last stage. So this is when the muscles of the ventricles contract, forcing the blood out of the ventricles into the arteries. The semilunar valves are opened by the pressure of the blood as the blood is forced into the arteries. The atrioventricular valves, your bicuspid and tricuspid valves, are closed, preventing the backflow of blood into the atria. So notice how the tendons of the atrioventricular valves are tight, preventing the valves from prolapsing, so going all the way backwards and the blood going back into the atria. So what actually regulates the heart rate? Well, the rate at which the heart beats is controlled by a patch of muscle in the right atrium called the pacemaker. And the pacemaker sends electrical signals through the walls of the heart at regular intervals, which makes the muscles contract. The pacemaker's rate, and therefore the rate of the heartbeat, changes according to the needs of the body. For example, during exercise, when extra oxygen is needed by the muscles, the brain sends messages along the nerves of the pacemaker to make the heart beat faster. So what actually happens is the pacemaker sends a signal, so your atria contract first, and then the ventricles contract. So your atria and ventricles don't actually contract altogether. The atria contract first, and then the ventricles. Now, in some people, the pacemaker stops working properly. So an artificial pacemaker can be placed into the person's heart. So here you can see that in the picture. So here you can see the battery-operated implanted pacemaker. So this produces an electrical impulse at a regular rate of about one impulse per second. Artificial pacemakers can last up to about 10 years before they need to be replaced. So how do you find a pulse? Well, when you're looking for a pulse, you need to feel for an artery flowing close to the skin and over a bone or tendon. So you can easily feel the surges of blood with each heartbeat. So it's important to remember this. You feel for an artery that is close to the skin and it's going over a bone or tendon. So the best places are in your wrist, just under your thumb, or on your neck under the jaw, as you can see in these pictures here. And the pulse is measured as beats per minute. 
So you'll find that if you are fit, your resting pulse rate will be low and it will quickly return to normal after exercise. Now, why does the heart rate increase during exercise? Well, your muscles are working harder, so more work in the muscles. So you need more oxygen um, for respiration in the muscles. So the blood carries the oxygen to the respiring tissues. So in order for the, these muscles to get enough oxygen, your heart rate and breathing rate has to increase to meet the oxygen demand. So what else happens during strenuous exercise? Well, have you felt how hot your skin becomes? This is because the blood is diverted towards your skin so that the heat generated during exercise can be lost. How this happens is that the blood vessels in your skin dilate. This is because the muscles around the arterioles relax so that this increases the blood flow to the skin. The kidneys and internal organs, the muscles around the arterioles contract, so the blood vessels constrict. And this decreases the blood flow to the kidneys and organs. So in summary, we've looked at the three stages in the heartbeat. So diastole, this is when the heart muscles are relaxed and blood flows into the heart. Atrial systole, the atrial muscles contract, the ventricles are relaxed, blood flows from the atria into the ventricles. Ventricular systole, the atria are relaxed, the ventricular muscles contract, forcing blood into the arteries. The pacemaker regulates the heart rate and this is found in the right atrium. A pulse is measured as beats per minute and you can Find your pulse by feeling for an artery that is running over a bone or tendon and it's close to the skin. The heart rate and breathing rate also increase with exercise. And that concludes our lesson, the end.